How's it going everyone? This is High Yield MCAT here today to talk about radioactive decay. I think this is a subject that gets made a bit more complex than it really needs to be, at least for purposes of MCAT. Of course it's going to be a little bit of an abstract concept when you're studying it in physics, but for the MCAT we really don't need to know too much other than these um, few basic processes. So let's jump right into it. So we're going to start with alpha decay. And in any type of decay, it's going to be important to recognize what is being emitted. And in alpha decay, perhaps uh, to no surprise to anyone, we're emitting an alpha particle. Now an alpha particle has a mass number, so this top number here, which is the sum of protons and neutrons of four in an atomic number, or the number of protons, of two. Now I've zoomed in on the periodic table here in the bottom right hand corner, and we can see that an alpha particle is really just a helium atom. So another way we can write an alpha particle is just four, two, helium, or since the name of the atom also denotes its atomic number, we can simply write it four he. So that's what happens in alpha decay. Now, one thing that I think is extremely helpful for the MCAT when we're thinking about radioactive decay is to treat these like their chemical equations, and we need to balance not only the protons, but the neutrons on each side. So really, this means we need to balance the top number, which is the sum of uh, protons and neutrons, and the bottom number, which is the sum of protons. So, if we look at oxygen, we look at our periodic table, we'll see that it has an atomic number of eight, meaning that it has eight protons. So we can write a little eight down here to help us out. And we see we have eight protons on this side and only two protons on this side. So we're gonna have some element here that's gonna be a six. And a six corresponds to carbon. If we look down at our periodic table, and then we also need to balance the number of neutrons out. So we have 16 on this side, four on this side, which means we need to have carbon 12. Oops, carbon 12, perfect. So now we have this balanced um, quote unquote chemical equation, even though it's not really a chemical equation in the classic sense, we can treat it as such because our protons and neutrons aren't just gonna disappear the law of conservation of mass still applies to them. So we can do the same thing with beta decay. So beta particle is a negative one in this atomic number, zero in the mass number, which is kind of confusing. Really all that means though is an electron. So another way we can write our beta particle is just an electron or simply electron with this little minus superscript to denote a negative charge. So once again, we can write a little eight for our atomic number of oxygen. And we have eight on this side and negative one on this side. So interestingly, we gain a proton to get an element with the atomic number of nine. So that's gonna be fluorine actually. And once again, we need to balance out the mass number, which in this case doesn't change because we have a zero for a beta particle or electron that's being emitted. And our mass number must stay the same if we're not emitting any appreciable mass. All right, so that's beta decay. Now positron emission is something also called beta plus decay. So a beta plus is sort of like a, um, an electron that is turned positive. So we call it a positron. positron. And we'll denote this with a beta. So we can do the same thing now that we have that plus one for our atomic number of a positron. And we can put an eight for our atomic number of oxygen. Since we have eight on this side and one on this side, we need a seven to balance things out. And a seven corresponds with nitrogen on our periodic table. Again, we need to balance out the atomic mass, which is 16 on the left side. And again, it has to be 16 on the N because our positron has a negligible mass. Finally, we can go to electron capture. 
Electron capture is a little bit different than the rest, but we can think of it as kind of reverse beta negative decay. So instead of emitting an electron, we're picking up an electron. So electron capture, we are capturing this electron that has a negligible mass and a, a quote-unquote atomic number of negative one. So our atomic number of oxygen is eight. So if we do eight minus one, we get an atom of seven. So this is nitrogen. And then we need to keep our mass number the same. So this would be 16. Finally, we have gamma decay, which is probably the easiest one. This doesn't actually emit any beta particles, alpha particles, um, anything of that sort. It just releases something called a gamma particle, which is a high energy photon. So really all this is is a little wave of light in the gamma range. And if you remember the electromagnetic spectrum, also another high yield MCAT topic, a gamma wave is in the electromagnetic spectrum at the highest frequency. So it's very high energy per another high yield formula, which is our energy is equal to Planck's constant H times the frequency of the light. This can also sometimes be written as H times the Greek letter nu, which is another way to write frequency. So nothing too special going on here in terms of mass, but we are emitting some high frequency light. All right, so that is it for radioactive decay.